Rocket Cats. Rocket Cats. Rocket Cats. Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is Not Exactly Normal. Humanity is rife with bad ideas, and few are worse than Rocket Cats, a historical oddity of what looks like cats with rockets strapped to their backs found in 16th century manuscripts, which at first glance look cute and whimsical, but upon closer inspection are rather horrific. Enter Franz Helm of Cologne, an artillery master who served under several German princes during the 16th century. In a dissertation he wrote on siege warfare, Helm detailed an idea he'd had for sieging unsiegeable castles. Rocket cats. Or more accurately, incendiary cats. Step 1. Catnap a cat from said unsiegeable castle. Step 2. Strap a fire arrow-like sack to its back. Step 3. Ignite and set the cat loose, which will, out of terror, return to its home, setting the castle ablaze in the process. Foolproof. Setting aside the clearly horrific nature of this idea, somehow the most far-fetched part of this scheme isn't the fact that the cat would actually return home to its castle instead of just running around the attacker's camp setting everything on fire, but the fact that Helm somehow thought he could catch a cat from the castle he was in the process of sieging? Though it is unclear whether or not Helm actually implemented his rocket cat idea. You probably noticed that some of those illustrations featured rocket pigeons, an idea that would actually surface again 400 years later, but more on that in a minute. Helm was not the first person to toy with the idea of combining animals and incendiaries, nor would he be the last. For example, ancient Hebrew history tells Samson's story of tying firebrands to the tails of foxes before driving them towards enemy crops. According to several Chinese military compendiums past the 8th century, they had several technologies for combining fire and birds. The first were the aptly named firebirds, which were partridge-like birds that carried a walnut filled with tinder around their necks. They were to fly to and roost on the enemy's thatched roofs, setting them ablaze. Another similar process involved attaching lit tinder inside an apricot pit to the leg of a sparrow, with the hopes that they would nest in and set fire to their enemy's granaries. They would also use land animals like horses, deer, and boar, either placing lit tinder in their antlers or by tying oil-soaked reeds to their tails and lighting them. Though this strategy fell out of fashion after the generals realized they were just giving their enemies free steak. That is, until the 13th century when they realized that they could strap barrels of gunpowder to the backs of boars and they could finally do some real damage. They would later employ a similar method which involved a wooden dummy stuffed with gunpowder and tinder strapped to the back of a horse. The Russian primary chronicle details that in the 10th century, Kievan leader Olga of Kiev used flaming birds in combat against the Drevlians. Supposedly, she had pigeons and sparrows taken from the homes of the enemy, then had sulfur dip cloth tied to their legs and set on fire. They then flew home, setting fire to everything in their path. All this blatant and horrible disregard for animals is nothing new, and these ideas would surface again around a thousand years later during the Second World War. Post Pearl Harbor, the Americans were now in the war, and actively looking for a way to hit the Japanese back hard in retaliation for that horrible attack. Enter a Pennsylvania dentist and inventor named Little S. Adams, who happened to be friends with Eleanor Roosevelt, the First Lady. Having vacationed extensively in the Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico, home to millions of bats, he had an idea. Bat bombs. Yes, bat bombs. Basically, the plan was to attach small, timed napalm bombs to Mexican free-tailed bats. A thousand of those bats would be stuffed into larger bomb casings, and then a million of those bombs would be dropped over Osaka Bay. The bats would be released, wake up, and then do what bats do best. They would seek out small crevices to hide in, namely buildings. Once all the bats had settled into the buildings, the napalm bombs would go off and devastate the city, leaving Japan's citizens homeless and their factories in ashes. But as you know, they would never get that far. But they did surprisingly get pretty far. Having been endorsed by President Roosevelt, or rather, Roosevelt said, this man is not a nut. It sounds like a perfectly wild idea, but it's worth looking into. So they proceeded with testing. The first step was to capture bats and force them into a hibernating state by putting them into cooled storage containers. During the first round of testing, none of the bats woke up when they were released from the bombs and they just crashed into the ground. Though later they realized these storage containers had been too cool and the bats had already frozen to death. Great. Their later tests would only get worse. Setting up at Carlsbad Air Force Base, they captured thousands of hibernating bats from the nearby caves and strapped 
tiny napalm bombs designed specifically for bats to them. Though you wouldn't know it by looking at them, they're pretty huge. But during the test, several of the bats woke up and did exactly what Adams hoped they would. Except not over Osaka, but rather at the Carlsbad Air Force Base. They sought out every crevice they could find, including under a fuel tank and control tower, at which point the napalm went off, setting a blaze to and destroying the majority of the facility. Due to an oversight, with much of the staff thinking that they were using dummy bombs, there were no fire extinguishers on site. And by the time the fire trucks arrived, the flames had spread too far to stop. In order to preserve the secrecy of the project, what remained of the facility was raised with bulldozers. Further testing found that for all the time and money invested, 24 million in today's dollars to be specific, napalm bombardment was only 3.7% more efficient when delivered via bats than gravity. Yet somehow bat bombs might not actually be the strangest weapon to come out of World War II. That title probably goes to pigeon guided missiles. In case you don't know, pigeons are super smart. They can solve puzzles, can remember distinct images for years, and can find their way home from over a hundred kilometers away. And because of this, they were experimented on as an early form of missile guidance. Psychologist B.F. Skinner worked heavily with pigeons, and pigeon guided missiles were one of his more interesting projects. Basically, he trained pigeons to react to the difference of light and dark on an image, training them using reinforcement to peck the contrasting part of the image. He then gradually shifted them from pecking black and white to pecking a white cruiser or battleship on the dark of an ocean. Once the pigeons were loaded into the missiles, the pigeon could peck at the boat on the screen, guiding the missile towards its target. Project Pigeon was much more effective and accurate than the missile guidance systems of the day. But due to its slow progress compared to other technologies and the difficulty of getting the military to put its missiles in the beaks of pigeons, it was canceled. It's interesting to me that now, if you heard that the military was strapping firebombs to cats, the world would seemingly come to a halt. But 400 years ago, someone was able to write a dissertation in which they said, with a complete straight face, roughly, yeah, let's tie a firebomb to a cat and toss it at a castle. I guess times do change. What do you guys want me to talk about in my next video? Please let me know in the comments. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I would be very pleased with that. I'm trying to do more videos. I say that every time, but I shot two this time, so we'll see about that. Be sure to hit subscribe for new episodes whenever I can make them, or at least think about it. <laughs>